My name is John Passfield, and I'm going to read from my novel, Eleanor Duza, Let Me Have My Wings. The title of this reading will be Eleanor Duza, Video 12, Duza's Rivalry with Sarah Bernhardt. Well, here's the cover of the novel, Eleanor Duza, Let Me Have My Wings, a novel by John Passfield, a photograph from 1894 of Eleanor Duza in Venice uh, on the Grand Canal in a gondola. Here's the uh, summary on the back cover. Eleonora Duza spent her whole career producing, directing, and acting in the great female roles of the theatrical repertoire. She claims that when she's not on stage, she does not exist. A poet publishes a novel in which an aging actress's only role is to be a young poet's muse. The publication of the novel is a crisis for Laduza as the fictional portrait of a pathetic, clinging female threatens to fill the void and become her personal myth in the public mind. But her greatest fear is that the imagery of the poet's book will alter the way she thinks of herself. The two great stage divas of the late 19th century clash as image arcs in the mind of the main character, Eleonora Duza. We create myths of other people. Other people create myths of ourselves. We, in turn, create myths of ourselves as well. So a myth is simply a pattern into which to fit individual items of information, which then become imagery which support the meaning of the myth. So if you see yourself, Eleonora Duza, as a successful female actor, uh, producer, uh, what was the third one? Uh, sorry, I forgot. Um, actor, producer, and director, sorry about that then all the information that you turn into imagery supports that. But what if alien imagery uh, comes in, alien information? What do you do with that? How does that alter your own myth about yourself? Well, to carry on here. Here we see <clears throat> the Sarah myth and the Dusa myth engaged in a value battle in the mind of the main character, Ladusa, in an effort that she is making to evaluate the significance of her life. So let's go to chapter four. There are three chapters in which these two battle it out. The battle of the divas, the battle of the imagery, the battle of the myths. Page 28, I'll start there. The battle of uh, La Dusa, Eleanor Dusa and Sarah Bernhardt. Italy is very small. She is a new country with very little in the way of a legitimate stage. The dramatic world belongs to the English and the French. They have the playwrights, they have the plays, they have the theaters, they have the audiences, they have the acclaim, they have all the great roles in their repertoire. Then we go uh, just two pages over to page 30. Here we are. Sarah Bernhardt is the queen of the dramatic world. She acts in English and in French. She acts in Paris, in London, and in New York. She has been the queen of the stage for many years. She has a 15-year head start on me. What Sarah has done, I know that I can do too. Then we go to page 32, again only a couple of pages later. Sarah has conquered in every role. Sarah has conquered in every play. Sarah has conquered every audience. Sarah has conquered every reviewer. Sarah's castles guard the landscape of the legitimate stage. And then the fourth one in this chapter is page 33. Here it is here. I must take the battle to Sarah. She has a hostile army which guards the stage. I must conquer the theater world of Sarah's domain. She will be quite a formidable foe. 
She will cling with a lioness's will to what she has come to see as hers and hers alone. She will not slumber on the battlements. How shall I take the ramparts of Paris? By stealth or by force? So let's go to chapter six then. That was chapter four. Uh, we'll find page 44 here. She does go to Paris to take the battle to Sarah. Arriving in Paris to play Marguerite, Sarah has made a big splash in the newspapers, welcoming the new young apprentice actress to Sarah's town. She offers me the use of her personal theater, a star and a lock on her dressing room door. The janitor takes me out into the alley and down a few doors. Sarah's dressmaker mutters and scolds, Are you playing a waif or a drab? Sarah's jeweler throws up his hands, Are you playing Marguerite or her lowly Italian maid? Then we go to page uh, 46. Now this is an attempt to do battle with Sarah in her own town, Paris. Acting on Sarah's stage. In Sarah's role, in Sarah's Paris, in front of Sarah's audience, with Sarah's reviewers taking notes, unable to concentrate on my role, to be myself as Marguerite. I know every mechanical move that Sarah makes. Do I wear none? I hear the rattle of Sarah's jewelry. I am nervous. My eyes are blurry. I play the part in a nowhere land, neither Marguerite of Sarah nor of myself. I break my concentration. I glance out at Sarah's box as our man speaks. I see Sarah bathed in light. She revels in my, my attention. She is welcoming me to her lyre, playing her magnanimous Sarah the Grand Dam role. All eyes are turned on Sarah, none on me. And then we go to... Uh, Page uh, 48, a stack of newspapers on the table. I ask my friends to leave me alone. I struggle through waves of ink in my faulty French. La Duza has no conception of the role of Marguerite. The Italian actress was nervous and definitely not in diva form. She should take notes while watching Sarah in the role. Madame Sarah has triumphed gloriously over Ledusa. I call the maid and point to the papers and point to the fire. Then the last one in that section uh, is page 49. A young Italian reviewer on the train. He overheard Sarah saying that I do not act. A peasant who wanders onto the stage, a marguerite without any jewelry? What a skin flint is Duzus, our man. Would I care to make a comment for the Italian press? Well, there's the first skirmish in the uh, uh, duel of uh, Sarah Bernhardt and Eleanor Duza. Let's go to chapter 8. So we've done chapter 4, chapter 6, and chapter 8, page 60. We go to... Now, these are spread out in chapters because these are images that she's... Uh, using in the depths of her mind to evaluate other imagery in her mind. So the imagery is all interlayered, uh, spread out, so that uh, the images in the, in the arcs interlayer at various stages in her mind, in her, in her thought. Uh, here we go with the uh, third uh, section of rivalry. Sarah on stage in London at Daly's Theater, Marguerite and La Dame aux Camellia, a French lady speaking in French, sparkling jewelry, gorgeous dresses, elegant coiffure. Every line is the same each evening. I have seen her perform many times. Night after night, every gesture is the same. She counts to five before she speaks to her man. It is the battle of the divas, the battle of acting styles, the battle of the old and the new. Marguerite is a costume on a hook on the dressing room door. Every character is Sarah on the stage. 
Then we go to page 62. Me on stage in London at the Drury Lane Theatre, across the street from the theatre, where Sarah plays, Marguerite and La Dame de Camellia, a French lady speaking in Italian, Marguerite and I, as Marguerite on the stage. Marguerite takes over my body. Marguerite takes over my mind. I fall in love each night anew with our man. I'm not an actress on stage. I'm a woman whose heart is breaking. There are nights when my lips so tremble I can hardly speak. All I can manage to do is whisper, Armand, Armand. It is the battle of the divas, the battle of acting styles, the battle of the old and the new. Every night I am embattled. Waves of ecstasy and waves of despair. Every night I am another Marguerite. And then we go from 62 to 64. A review from George Bernard Shaw. He has watched Sarah. He has watched me. I read the papers over an English cup of tea. Sarah does not enter into the leading character. She substitutes herself for it. Duza, with a tremor of her lip, makes you feel rather than see. Madame Bernhardt's clever performance was annihilated by Duza. Duza provided the best modern acting I have seen. Duza touches you straight to the heart. I smile as I sip my English tea. This is the review that I shall save. I shall treasure the words of George Bernard Shaw. Then lastly in this reading, page 66. The theater world is mine. I have battled Sarah on her own turf and won the draw. Sarah is the old and I am the new. I can play Shakespeare. I can play Ibsen. I can play Racine. And I can play Marguerite as a human being. No need to strut and gesture and pose. Simply breathe out and simply breathe in. Underneath the layers of lacquer, which are applied each time she is played, there is a lady who actually lived that life in that time. All one has to do is go back and bring her to life. So let me uh, read a note here. In explaining the dynamics of the form of the poetic novel that I have developed, I've used an analogy from the world of sports. I've written it in some of my planning notebooks and journals and have ad-libbed it during some of my video readings. Here's a clear statement of that analogy. Images in a poetic novel act like rocks in a curling circle. When a new rock enters the circle, when a new image appears in a poetic novel, it can change the value of all the images in the novel as a rock can change the value of all the rocks in the circle, enhancing the value of some, diminishing the value of some, and eliminating the value of others. Images cooperating and competing this is the dynamic of the poetic novel. So, when the Sarah myth collides with a Dusa myth by the laws of physics and by the laws of dramatic imagery, something has to give. And this particular image battle, this battle of the myths, is made more complicated by the fact that there's no narrator in this novel. Since the battle takes place in one mind only, that of Ladusa, she, and certainly not Sarah, is the only one who can act as the referee. Unless, of course, we consider that the reader is involved in the game as well. Okay. The novel is Eleanor Adusa, Let Me Have My Wings, a novel by John Passfield. 
It's found on Amazon. You can have a look there. There's information there. Rocksmillspress.com. R-O-C-K-S-M-I-L-L-S-P-R-E-S-S.com is my uh, publisher. There's more information there. At my website, johnpassfield.ca. J-O-H-N-P-A-S-S-F-I-E-L-D.ca. There's more information there. A planning notebook in which I worked my way through the writing process as I was writing the novel and a journal in which I reflected on the novel as I was polishing it. So have a look there. There's all kinds of uh, uh, information and comments and thoughts about novel writing and uh, and uh, poetic novel as well. So have a look if you're interested at johnpassfield.ca. Lastly, thank you for watching this video.